to those institutions. He has been the Vice President of BSE, the International Catholic Bureau for Children, since 2006. We also have Brother Dominic Jordan, who taught and was principal in New York City high schools for 22 years before going to Africa in Kenya and Ethiopia to serve as principal in several high schools there. Additionally, he has done development work both for the brothers and several dioceses. Both Brother, <clears throat> Brother Dominic has recently returned to the district and is currently in residence at St. Peter's Community in Staten Island. We welcome both of you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting both Dominic and myself to present and participate in this assembly. I want to thank Brother Alvaro for traveling all the way from Rome to be our warm-up act. <laughs> I want to begin by setting a global presence. I'm going to use a video, a non Lasallian video that's been on YouTube for the last three or four years. Uh, because it expresses better than I can in words the joy the, uh, of seeing diversity and commonality in the Lasallian countries that I've been visiting over the last nine years.
Uh, SACLE stands for International Lasallian Cooperation Service, with the emphasis today on international. You'll be glad to know that in French and Spanish and Italian, you don't have to read it backwards. <laughs> there are Lasallian presence in 80 of the 193 countries in the world. 23 in Africa, 21 in the Americas, 19, 17 in Europe, 16 in Asia, and three in Oceania. I ask you to consider this morning in which of these countries you can picture yourself dancing. I find it hard to choose between India and Papua New Guinea. <laughs> the missionary policy of uh, the Institute promotes two things, service to the poor and self-sufficiency of the local institute. Either one alone is relatively easy to do. Doing both simultaneously is a challenge. How do we serve the poor but pay for it? At the International Assembly in 2006, someone asked why the richer sectors of the Institute don't help the poorer ones. And the answer is they do. In the last eight years, more than $77 million has crossed borders supporting Lasallian projects around the world. In 2010 alone, more than $12 million moved from Europe and the Near East, Asia Pacific, non Lasallian donors, Canada and the US, and Latin America, to Africa, Asia Pacific, and Latin America. Not only money moves between borders in service of the mission. Today, 20 Diener brothers are serving in nine overseas countries. As Dominic and I tell some stories, we invite you to think how you and your institutions can exploit opportunities and surmount obstacles that arise in our stories. If you can envision where, when, and how you can be, as Alvaro, Brother Alvaro challenged this morning, a brother or sister without borders, always willing to lend a hand to overcome differences. Then Dina will easily discern the place overseas apostolates will have in its mission plan. Let's begin where borders and even walls are a big issue. The Holy Land a top priority uh, in the Institute today. This is the security fence surrounding Bethlehem University, which is, always, uh, which is a scar on a par with the Berlin Wall. Bethlehem University um, has four Diener brothers there now. You heard Brother Alvaro say it's the most important university in the Institute today. Um, they're always looking for professors to help, long-term commitments, short-term commitments. You may not be aware that there's a primary school short stroll from the university's campus. Jerusalem is only five miles from Bethlehem, but delays through the security fences and checkpoints make the journey much longer than it should be. Here we see the playground of the school there with the less ominous wall of Jerusalem where you can play handball against the wall. My favorite story is uh, the College St. Joseph in Jaffa. It overlooks Tel Aviv and the Mediterranean Sea. All the students study Hebrew, Arabic, French, and English, as well as their other subjects. What makes this school unique is its student body of 300 Christians, 200 Muslims, and 100 Jews, a testament that the most formidable barriers, borders, and walls can be breached. What can Dina do for the Holy Land? If breaching walls in the Holy Land impresses you, consider the feat of 27 people, 
25 from 16 different religious congregations living and working together in the newest country on earth. We are ahead of the curve on shared mission and association, but that rarely applies to work among different religious congregations. Solidarity with Southern Sudan is an initiative championed by Brother Alvaro since his time as president of the Union of Superior Generals. Today, 131 religious congregations and individual lay men and women contribute money and personnel to one or more of the four component projects. Brother Bill Furman of Australia heads the teacher training college, which needs teachers of teachers and welcomes volunteers all year round, especially for their January, February in-service training. The District of Australia, New Zealand, Pakistan, Papua New Guinea, maybe the longest named district in the Institute, is sending five teachers there this January. Like its educational system, Southern Sudan's healthcare system is abysmal. The nurse training component is rebuilding abandoned healthcare facilities and training nurses to staff them. They need trained healthcare professionals. The bishops of Southern Sudan are looking for pastoral pointers. The first pastoral initiative was 101 days of prayer, leading to the referendum that led to independence. Pastoral care presenters on topics of interest to Southern Sudan's clergy and, and church workers are most welcome. <coughs> Sudan is a land of underdeveloped resources. The agricultural component hopes to improve yields of local farmers and maximize income from Solidarity's lands to make its projects more self-sufficient. What can Dina do? for Southern Sudan. Haiti is much closer than Southern Sudan. The Lasallian response to the earthquake there raised more than $2 million in 28 countries, $80,000 from the US-Canada region, and more than 25% of that from DINA. All Lasallian works in Haiti survived the quake. Early on, 16,000 went for emergency food for an orphanage, not our own, and 92,000 went to five local congregations who did suffer damage to their properties. The balance of the money is allowing the brothers to construct a school and health center in Kazoo, section of Port-au-Prince. Construction will be in three phases, a primary school and residence for teachers and brothers first, then health care center, and finally a secondary school with offices, library, and playing fields. Phase one construction is underway. The primary school will open in 2012. When complete, the campus will look like this. In addition to the schools and health center, the project will offer formation programs for women, literacy and computer classes for adults, and the use of library and playing fields for local youth. What can Dina do for Haiti? What would you become of your Lasallian mission if you lost your schools? That's what happened to the brothers in Vietnam. When the French left in the 50s, they lost the schools in the north. When Americans left in the 70s, they lost the rest of them. The schools they lost were large, prestigious secondary schools, but they were able to retain their non-academic properties. This photo is taken from the brothers' residence on the top floor of their former school, looking down on students in the now government school. In this residence, they have a hostel for students and a catechetical center. 
Here is their catechetical center in Maitan. The student brothers, as well as religious of other congregations and lay men and women of the diocese study here. The brothers have hostels for primary, secondary, and tertiary students. Here the boarders in Ban Matut are about to set off for their government school. The hostel looks suspiciously like a school complete with classrooms, which are officially study halls. Another property they retained is this cemetery in Hue. It's been put to creative use. The building in the background is another hostel. On the other side, it houses a motorcycle repair shop, motorcycle repair school. Vocational schools are permitted, and the brothers have several of them. The brothers organize non-formal education centers in the slums of Ho Chi Minh City that offer a few hours of instruction each weekday. Under the name of a former student of the brothers, a new school has opened in Pleiku. I was there the day the school opened with only two students, a girl and a boy. The boy was the son of the government school's principal. Such is the Lasallian reputation 40 years after the brothers were forced from their schools. It's probable the brothers will continue their return to formal schools. Brother Peter tells me, that's the visitor, that they need assistance in administration and pedagogy. What can Dina do for Vietnam? Here is Brother Pat Bradley with his English students. English proficiency is a hot commodity throughout the world. The Lasallian schools in Burma were lost in the 60s. Like Vietnam, they have hostels and a catechetical center, but their pride and joy is their center for English and computers in Yangon. They can use advice in those areas. In Pakistan, there are two large, wealthy English medium schools with predominantly Muslim student body. These two schools support 12 poor village schools, predominantly Christian students. Two years ago, the village schools began shifting from English, from Ur Urdu medium to English medium because English offers the students better prospects. Last year, the language of education in Rwanda changed from French to English. Many of the teachers there are having difficulty with the conversion. English proficiency is even sought das in parts of Europe. Das hier ist das wichtigste Gerät des Küstenwächter. Das Gerät und das Gerät. Überlebensradar. This is the German Coast Guard. We are thinking, we're thinking. What are you thinking about? <laughs> the Lasallian volunteer model in the United States is similar to those in Australia, Mexico, and the Philippines. College graduates live in community and work with the poor for a year or more. The European model is different. Volunteers join a group in their senior year of high school. Groups of 12 are formed 12 months before they travel. They meet three times before they travel. They raise money to cover their expenses and some building costs. The group leader is older and has been on at least two trips. They spend five weeks on a construction project. They form a community on the ground. 
they get their hands dirty. They leave some, something concrete behind and they return to their homes enriched because of the time they spent in a different culture. Could this volunteer model work in Dina? My own international Lasallian experience began 11 years ago in Sill. Here is a list of some recent Sillists. If you've been to Sill or CL or the International uh, Lasallian Leadership Training Center in Rome, raise your hand now so that your table mates will know who you are. If the opportunity to attend one of these uh, comes along, I would say try it. You'll like it. <laughs> now I think I'm right on time because Dominic and I are doing a uh, tag team beat the clock here. Good morning. It's a great privilege for me to be here and to share with you. Um, my basic job is simply to, um, as uh, Brother said, a tag team, to pick up where he left off. Uh, he gave you wonderful examples of what could be done uh, throughout the world. Uh, and basically, uh, the mission experience, if you have ever had a one, and a number have, um, is a life-changing one. Whether you are a brother or a lay person, you will never be the same again. You will touch the real world um, in a larger sense. And I think that's one of the goals that basically um, we try to give, or you try to give your students that bigger view. And the more I think that you can put yourself in contact with the overseas apostolates, that much more you will share um, I have the privilege of coming home every year and speaking with some of my twin schools. And I think um, it does help a tremendous amount to have that shared experience of uh, one of the brothers who's on the staff uh, and Lasallian uh, doing the kind of work that um, the, the kids really don't know about. And that sharing is a tremendous um, education for them. I think that's really the goal of what you really want to do. You want to give your students a bigger global view of what's going on in the world so that they will get a sense that they are their brother's keeper. I have a responsibility to make this world a better place uh, because I lived in it. And the way in which I can do that is while I'm very good and I, I collect food cans and things like that for the local neighborhood, I think it's very important that they also get a bigger sense and the union that exists between the various Lasallian institutions throughout the world. And if we do get that kind of sense of togetherness, I think it will help our own local areas as well. I have worked my, uh, the last 27 years um, in what is called the Luanga District, which is a new district that was not in existence when I first went to Kenya. Uh, 27 years ago, but now is a full-fledged uh, consisting of uh, five different countries. In many of these, this is just one region and is typical of many regions in which they have uh, high schools, uh, primary schools, but they've also uh, begun to stretch out and see other things that they should be doing. So we have, uh, both in Ethiopia and in Kenya, we have what is called child rescue programs. Some are associated right on the same campus as the high school, a unique mix of a child care and a, high, a regular high school, and it's something that works. Others exist by themselves or have been started by other communities like the Mercy Sisters and then turned over to the brothers. So there's many different ways in which these things come about. Um, the biggest uh, problem that we have, of course, is always finances. And we are very deeply indebted to the twinning uh, operations that we have. Uh, basically, the twinning, uh, as you can see here, that the uh, DINA contributes uh, almost 90,000. But again, we have to challenge ourselves always. Is our school doing all that it could? 
Uh, of that 20, of that 90,000, uh, some schools are exceptional. And I, um, um, I certainly publicly want to acknowledge a school like Bishop Lachlan, which is not a, um, uh, a rich school, but gives over uh, almost 20,000 of that uh, to uh, St. Mary's. So uh, some schools have dynamic types of fundraising and consciousness in their schools. And if that kind of infectious um, uh, enthusiasm could be uh, shared with many other schools, it would be a tremendous thing for all of our institutions. And that is my plea today, that um, we share some of these ways of doing things. Um, basically, if we even set a minimum um, of, a, of um, $10 per student, that would give us a goal to reach. Uh, and if that were true in all of our institutions throughout the United States, it would not be just maybe 100,000, it'd be 700,000, which could make a tremendous difference. Uh, a little money goes a long way in Africa. Um, basically, even the colleges and high schools, um, we have always had a program uh, at St. Mary's and in Africa since I've been there. I have worked closely with the groups that Brother has talked about from England and Ireland. Uh, these uh, groups that come out, live with us for six weeks, build a, um, a classroom, whatever, and they are changed for life. The true proof of the pudding is that many of these volunteers who come for six weeks end up giving one or two years of service overseas because they, you have a friend for life, in a sense. You also change them. I feel that we give back far more than we receive because of the change of life that exists in these young people. Now, our colleges are starting the same kind of thing. LaSalle University, uh, St. Mary's, uh, Moraga, um, Manhattan has it, all right, has tried it, um, and other colleges are uh, beginning this kind of immersion because they see the value of getting this wider perspective. And the more I think we expose, we have also had students from high schools uh, the Midwest sent 15 to 17 kids. That's a little much, all right? We, we would appreciate anything below 12, all right? The reason is we only have usually, all right, most schools don't have buses. We have vans, and the capacity is 12. So if you're thinking, think 12 or less. But basically, um, We've had groups come out from Lachlan, from LaSalle, from uh, Providence, and other places, and they have been really changed. And when they go back, uh, they transform their school into a, a world body, in a sense. And the more that, that those kind of interchanges can happen, I think it will also help our vocation uh, program as well. Because sometimes, you know, they see uh, the brothers working in, um, you know, schools, and they think, well, you know, laymen can do the same thing. But, you know, in a large sense, uh, once you get overseas, um, it does take brothers and associates, all right, with very special charism, to be able to pull off some of the things that Brother talked about. And uh, then they can see a wider perspective. So basically, my emphasis would be in terms of looking at um, some kind of ongoing communication in which people from overseas would come and speak. Um, I have the, the privilege of being able to go to several schools, but I think this kind of thing has to happen. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot take Steve and move him around to every high school in the country. But uh, we can divvy it up, at least in Dina, that some of these things and awarenesses can be given. And I think that um, some of these students even uh, can share if they come. So that, um, as I said, many good things can happen as a result of communication and interchange. Uh, what are some things that you could do well, Brother has outlined that very, very well. There are many areas in which service uh, to the overseas apostolate uh,
can really make a difference. You really know, don't know the good impact that you can have. Um, you know, in a sense, um, I'm a little prejudiced being an American uh, because I really, um, I think people are looking for this can-do philosophy. And I think Americans personify that element in which all things are possible. And when you come into a place, now sometimes we're a little naive, but it's still very important that you, that you come and communicate that kind of thing, that these things are possible. Now, of course, we can afford to be can-do because we have the resources and we have the experience that goes with that zealousness of being able to do things. But I think if, uh, you know, in other countries, they don't have these because generally they don't have the resources, they don't have the experience, and so there is very little hope. So <clears throat> you're not going to bring a lot of money, you're not going, <clears throat> you're not going to bring uh, much that is going to be world-shaking in terms of experience, but you will bring you. And you have no idea of the effect of a difference of culture, a difference and the attitude that you bring. And when you come and just live amongst people for a little while, you will be transformed and the people that you meet will be transformed and most certainly the people that you come in contact overseas will be transformed. Uh, because uh, we have had many groups, um, and part of the problem of having a group is it does take a certain amount of work. So if you are planning to, um, you might say, educate your, your students by bringing them out, uh, know that it is not an easy job hosting. Uh, you have to bring some. There has to be a quid pro quo. Uh, so uh, we told LaSalle, you know, if you're going to bring, you know, 12 students, all right, well, then you, you should build something for us, all right, do something practical, all right, and then we'll, you know, take care of you, but it's just that we're not interested just in PR, all right, there's a lot of PR, so we don't need the PR, but what we need are people, and that people contact is very, very essential, and you can do you can do an awful lot just in terms of your presence. Um, when uh, volunteers come and they live amongst us for a short period of time, um, they, you know, no matter what country it is, um, the danger, of course, with Dina is that the brother or the layperson will fall in love. All right, I went for three years, stayed for twenty-seven. All right, uh, you fall in love with where you go uh, because the people are quite lovable and um, they also are quite needy. And no matter how limited our gifts are, you have something which is, all right, um, priceless. Your enthusiasm, your desire, your uh, experience. Uh, this is what makes our brother's school so famous throughout the world. Uh, that. Uh, even in Kenya, the best schools in the country are the brother schools. Um, not because of the fact that, that they're just brothers, but because the brothers bring a certain amount of experience, a way, 300 years tradition of how to run a school. And the people see the difference. And they are looking for that kind of light. They are looking for that kind of vision uh, that certain things are possible. You don't need a lot of money. You just need, all right, people who are very generous and who are willing to give them themselves and give of their experience. And uh, even if they're young people, th they can certainly do an awful lot. So, um, as we said, basically, not only is it the schools, but it is also our communities. Uh, many of our communities are small. Having uh, someone living with them um, to support them. Um, uh, one brother, for instance, from St. Peter's, uh, goes out every year to different countries. He goes to Thailand, Sri Lanka, and to uh, last year he went to Kenya. Now, this is a brother who's 85 years old. So life begins, really, at 85. <laughs> and he has found a whole new 
way and um, of living, besides still teaching back in the States. It gives life to uh, what he means as a brother. And so that's the invitation really in the bottom line that I give to you. Uh, give your students, give yourself the opportunity for the bigger vision because you'll never be the same person again. Thank you. We've run out of time, but not out of stories. So I refer to you to Bulletin uh, 253, which is on the DINA website. And for language teachers among you at LaSalle.org, it's available in Spanish and French as well. Um, and now it's time for the uh, table discussions where we want to know what you are thinking about. <laughs> Again, we'd like to thank Brother Stephen and Brother Dominic for setting the, the framework for our table discussions this morning. Uh, as we begin, we will be coming to conclusion with table discussions uh, for 11.45, where we'll be having the reporting out. So enjoy your conversation. <laughs>